Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation that's meant to help you just drift off or just let everything else just fall away. You're with us, listening to us to talk about talking about mundane things, and we thank you for that. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. Amanda, welcome to the show. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Yeah, welcome to the show. I'm just welcome. I'm here in spirit and in flesh. Yes, and today we're going to talk about mirrors, windows, and glass doors. It feels like a Fleetwood Mac song. God, it certainly it does. It does. But before we do that, I want to... Um, there's a few... Uh, some of our listeners reached out to us, and they have some messages for you and for me. Oh, gosh. So, no, they're all good. But I want to mention that one of our listeners... And do you, I, I just don't want to say Allison. Her. Allison had recommended that we uh, go to this spa, this Nordic spa. And Hardzogilev. I hope Nordic we got spa. The, yeah. Um, I hope we said her name right. But Allison, thank you because we did book. Oh, the one that we booked. The one that we booked. That was Allison's reco. That was Allison's reco. Oh. Did you not know that that was her reco? I showed you last no. week. So. Oh, maybe you know my brain has been a little bit. There's been good. a lot happening. Yeah, fair. And so Allison. Knew about the Ten Toes Coffee House, and they they said that we should check out the spa. Mm-hmm. And when I showed it to Amanda, I was like, eh, "Take a look at the spa." She's like, "Oh, we're going." And I and you know when your spouse says that, you're kind of like, "All right, maybe we'll go." Mm-hmm. Amanda, you know, you you put your words to 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 keyboard, and we booked. A massage. We did. We booked massages, nature massages. So we're going to be outdoors, I guess. So they massage us outside? In a hut. I don't know. Oh, I don't know if I like that. Well, we'll find out. (laughs) I thought it would be better to be outside, but it's like outside in a hut. I think a cedar hut. Okay. As long as it's not a yurt. I can deal with anything but a yurt. Well, we'll find out. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, We didn't didn't sign up for the, the floating pool. But we're doing all the waters and we're doing the massages. I've I've done flotation tanks, and after a while, I get a little bit bored. Mm-hmm. So before we get into mirror windows and glass doors, Amanda, here are a few things that I've mentioned that we've got from our listeners. So Lisa Cole, who is a listener and who just recently, uh, I just want to send a shout out. She's recently completed her master's in fine art specializing in ceramics. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so she's That's someone who reaches out. Lisa. And yeah, so, the, uh, you know, we, we raise our glass. I, wa- I raise my porcelain mug, my handmade porcelain, <laughs> porcelain mug, my earthenware mug. I'm glad you mentioned that. So this is what Lisa Cole has told us about. She's the one who's who's helped us uh, with regards to ceramics. Anytime we, we mention ceramics or pottery classes or anything, here's what she has to say. Remember we were talking about terracotta and earthenware? Yes. Yeah, so you really, you set me up. Yes, you didn't even know I didn't even know. So Lisa says, terracotta is what we make flower pots and chicken bricks from. So Lisa's... In the UK. Okay. And we talked about chicken bricks. Yeah, we did a whole chicken brick episode. And I wonder if Lisa has ever made a chicken brick. Or used one. Or used one. Oh, well, Lisa, you'll have to let us know. And it is porous. So terracotta is porous. So when you soak it before it goes into the oven, it holds onto that water. It fires around 1,950 degrees Fahrenheit or 1,060 Celsius. So it fires at a very hot, hot uh, right. Stoneware is what mugs and dishes tend to be made of. In the UK, we have a brand called Denby. Oh, we have Denby here. Is that ours? Is that ours? Is ours Denby? Ours is Lennox. But Denby is... We were going to do a, a denby Lennox hybrid for our wedding china. True story. And I... You wanted the Denby and I wanted the Lennox. Oh, and so the Lennox won out. And the Lennox won out. And in the, the end. In the end, the Lennox was the right choice. we were for trying us. to – it wasn't a true set and we were trying to Frankenstein merge it all. won. Yeah, and, and nobody's never, happy. Nobody's happy when you do So that. then just I became happy. Which now I'm happy because I – Do you lo- like our dishes? I love our, I love our dishes. Oh, you fought me on those. I know, but now I love them. It's 12 years later and I said – you said you're going to get bored. You're, you're going to get – uh, you'll be so done with them. You're, they're too busy, and you'll be so done with them, and you're not going to want them, and you'll get tired of them. And yes. I said, I won't, and it's 12 years later, and I am not at all tired of them. 
So I'll have to take a picture of our Lennox ceramics. Chirp. It's Lennox Chirp yeah, is so the pattern. You, you can look it up. Lots so, of birds and flowers. Anyways, Lisa goes on. A brand called Denby that's famous for their stoneware. So Denby oh. is famous for their stoneware. It fires at 2,124 degrees Fahrenheit and 2,260 degrees. Uh, Four degrees Fahrenheit, pardon me. So between 2,124 to 2,264. So that's really hot. It's very hot. And for us here in Canada, that's 1,162 degrees to 1,240 degrees Celsius. Once you get past like 450 in the oven, I'm done. I don't know. It's all the same. So unlike terracotta, stoneware virtuifies, which means it chemically changes and is no longer absorbent. Oh, Okay. Porcelain needs a very high temperature between, uh, let me see here, uh, between, sorry, I've lost my place, Amanda. But you can't put porcelain in the oven. Well, we'll get there. 2,381 degrees Fahrenheit to 2,455 degrees Fahrenheit. That's practically the, the temperature of the sun, which translates to 1,305 degrees Celsius and to 13 thousand forty uh, sorry one thousand three hundred and forty six degrees Celsius so it's hot it's high to virtu to virtu virtuify and bone china is a type of so bone ti- bone china is a type of porcelain right and those are the temperatures that it needs to virtuify which I've never heard that term before which is is that makes what I would think is that to make it what it is. So you, you fire it at that temperature and then it, and then you're like, okay, and now I have a porcelain muck. Right. Now I have a terracotta this. Now I have stone uh, earthenware. So to virtuify f- so that it has virtue in that it, it has integrity in that piece. Right. So you can use it as it's intended. But this is all conjecture. This is where we get ourselves in trouble, Amanda, where, where we start. I never get in trouble. <laughs> Okay. To further confuse matters, Lisa says, there is another firing stage for all clay called bisque. We've heard bisque. Right, of We've course. We've heard bisque. That is a lower temperature, around 800 degrees Celsius, usually for any clay type. The bisque stage turns the clay into ceramic, which means it will be porous enough to glaze and decorate. So although porcelain is fired to a very high temperature, it is no good in domestic ovens because it is prone to thermal shock. You would have to heat it up and cool it down very gently for it to to survive. So that would suggest to me that if you were going to put porcelain in the oven, you would have to cool it very slowly. Well, I think I am going to look up Virtrify. I have some answers. Virtrification is the rapid cooling of liquid medium in the absence of ice crystal formation. Um, also, it could just mean to virtrify is to convert something into glass or glass-like substance, typically by exposure to heat. So, yeah, that's you're 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 turning it into that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, actually. Okay. Well, Lisa, thank you for that information. Now, before... I have one more. Yeah, sure. Virtrification is the progressive partial fusion of a clay or a body as a result of a firing process. I mean, that's what I said. Yeah, fair enough. And you're like, it's all conjecture. Well, you were saying... I've done my research You're saying virtrify is akin to the word virtue. You're you're sort of stating... Yeah, because that's the root word of it. Is it? I think so. Okay. Maybe not because it's for, it's virtrify, not virtuify. Okay, I still think so. So thank you, Lisa, for for sending us that message on our Patreon. And before we go on to our topic of hand at hand, Amanda, um, Carrie Hamilton said that um, remarkably bright creatures by Shelby Van Pelt is a very good book. And they think that you and I would really enjoy the audio version okay. of Remarkably Bright Creatures. But that would mean we listen to fiction, Marco. That's not something we normally do. I'm listen. assuming it's fiction. I, it sounds fiction-y, right? Listen, if it's a reco, we're going to do it. I keep so. using the word reco. That's a real casting term. Oh, is it? I, that's how I use it always because it's. we always say, who are your recos and who are your backups? 
So I think it's like a casting agency, a commercial agency term that I've picked up, a dirty term I've picked up in my work. I see, I see. All right, mirrors, Amanda. Let's talk mirrors, windows, and glass doors. Okay. What do you look for in a mirror? You know what mirror I like in this house? Tell me. I don't know if it's what I look for, but I like the one that has that old antique patina around the edges. Mm -hmm. Some people work really hard to make that happen where they put like, there's a way to do it where you put like hairspray. Sure. I forget how it's, maybe paint and hairspray. There's a way to do it. Right. I, but that one, it just has its own natural because it's old. Mm -hmm patina to it and I really really like that and so. those are the mirrors that I really don't you hate love. Them? I don't love look mirrors at you, that, yeah, at me right I like a very modern sleek reflective mirror what do you think about when like a whole wall is a mirror I don't love that no me neither it's not for me and I think it's because when when I bought this house one of the walls was mirrored I know I had no idea until very recently that that was the case <laughs> explain how you found out uh, because there's an app that we discovered here called House Sigma, which it's like a Zillow or whatever. Anyway, it, it shows you every listing ever, basically, of houses. So you can type in an address and look at the last listing. So we looked up ours. And it's the only time I've ever seen the pho before photos pictures. of what this house looked like before you bought it. And it's fascinating. It yeah. looks like such a different house. It's crazy. And so that that wall had a crack in the mirror. Oh wow! So I was. It was like the uh, mirror was cracked. Yeah. Oof. But I had them remove it before I moved in because I was like, I don't want a cracked mirrored wall. Mm -hmm. It was a small crack in the corner, but still, that's all you'll they see. They removed it. They removed it. Oh, you didn't come in and do that. No, I didn't. But that's I, interesting. Yeah. I didn't know you could do that. It was one of the conditions of the sale. Get rid of that mirror. I won't take your house. Right. And she did it. Did you ever um, play the the witch who says mirror 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 on the wall? The what? Isn't there a witch that says mi mirror mirror? Oh my on god! The are you going to be like doing incantations? No, it's Cinderella, isn't it? Oh, who's the fairest of them all? Yeah, it's not Cinderella. It's uh, Snow White. Is it Snow White? Because the mirror says, yeah, yeah, lady, it's not you. It's this chick in the woods. And then she gets upset. I see. Okay. Pretty sure that's it. Wow, we really do a great job of... <laughs> no, that's what the mirror is. She's like, who's the fairest of them all? And she's like, tell me I'm, you know... Beautiful. She thinks it's going to be her. And he's like, actually, there is this girl... I hate to break it to you. ...who lives in the woods. And she doesn't do a whole lot. And uh, so if you want to be the prettiest, I don't know why the witch cared... Like, she wasn't dating. Like It's true. Like, what does she care? Nobody cares. No one cares. <laughs> also, she had, like, weird horns out of her head. Maybe that, that was just Disney, but, yeah, I don't know. That's Fair. Snow White as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So What about it? Did I ever play it? Yeah. The that's... Snow White Witch? Yeah. You know what's funny is I think I did. That's why I mentioned it. I thought... I... No, I played um, Hansel and Gretel Witch. Okay. In, like, a ballet. I was the Hansel and Gretel Witch. Uh, what other witches have I played? I've played a couple different witches. That's the one I remember the most. Mm -hmm. Though, I always thought I would, I always thought I'd be in a kids show and I'd play a witch. Right. That kind of went out of fashion. Fair enough. So I never got my chance. All right. So we know what kind of mirrors you like. And you. And me. What about windows? What kind of windows do you like? I, I do like the windows that jet out and make a little thing. What's it called? A bay window? A bay window. Oh. I've always liked bay windows. I, didn't know this I feel like it, it gives you a built in nook that you can kind of it does. sit in. Do you know we used to have them on either side in my house in uh, Massachusetts? And uh, and it was like a little reading nook. I loved it. I kind of loved that. It got really hot though. Also, that's a great place to put plants. Yeah, it is. Right? For sure. I wonder if we could have a bay window in our kitchen. Maybe. Maybe. If we, like, knocked the wall out. Yeah. What kind of um, drapery or blinds do you put in a bay you window? You have to put blinds. Oh, it has to be blinds. Yeah, you have to put blinds. But they – and then they – they're kind of like window blinds, so they don't – they don't curl usually. I see. I think. Now I don't know. You got me wondering. I'll ask your mom. That's what I remember. Yeah, ask my mom. Mm -hmm. She had them. You know what? I love f French windows. Oh, what French, are, what are I French windows? I think French have figured out glass. Like, just the windows of cottages in France with the blue, 
the blue shutters, those pale blue shutters on a stone cottage. Okay. Come on, you can't beat that for windows. Sure. And just the frames, so pretty. Do you like the diagonal frames? You know how it's like they make diamonds, like the oh. diamond frames? They're like little diamond windows? Yeah, window frames. Like normally it just it's like a grid, but there's the diamond kind. I thought sure. you might be into those. They're okay. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, I What's don't know. your window? So you like bay windows? I like bay windows. I think they're cool. What about cool. a dormer window? Oh, you have to remind me what that one Dormer is. windows, they're very Canadian. Uh, they're, especially East Coast Canadian, but they're like a peaked roof, and then there's a little window part. Oh, so like it? if there's like a point at the top of the house and there's a window in there. Is it a circle window? Or is it Can like be. a half moon window? Could be. Okay. Either, yeah. Well, they're That's okay. a dormer, yeah. They're okay. Or they're, or it's like a roof, and they're the ones that kind of go up. Like little eyes, like smiling yeah, eyes. Yeah, like okay. little eyes, yeah. I don't know if that descri- – the, the ones that kind of go up are not a great description. But right. Anyway, I mean, Amanda windows. used her fingers. That's how I knew what, what – yeah, no, they're not, they're not my thing. Okay. Not into those windows. No. Huh? I, like, I like those windows. Okay, so you know when it comes to slider windows or slider doors – yeah. You know the ones that kind of fold into like an accordion? and Yeah. They, they, they disappear almost. They disappear and you have like access from inside your house to outdoors. Well, now we're talking about doors. Now we're into doors. Well, glass doors, yeah. So. Tell me. I had French doors in our house in New Brunswick and I love them and I would like them here. Okay. Why do you like French doors? Because they're so nice, French looking. I guess I like French things today. Sure. But don't you think French doors are better than sliders? I think in some in some spots they are, and I and I agree with you. I think they would be awesome where you want them. So we should get them. I don't think they're inexpensive though, French no, doors. I know we haven't we haven't budgeted spent for them. anything on this house in a long time. Okay, we haven't had it to spend, but true, we've made do with what we have happily. But French doors should be on that list. But you want them black. I did because they were really in, but that's kind of fading now. Oh, really? Well, that's part of that modern farmhouse Joanna Gaines aesthetic, and that's kind of gone by the way. So what kind of... But I do like the black ones are nice, like the more modern kind of looking. Sure. A black framed window. Mm -hmm. Very modern. And like I said, really, really in about three, three to five years ago. Now, honestly, the wood frames are coming back. Anything that looks mid-century, 1970s. Okay. 60s, I guess, more. But that's sort of what's, I think, more the aesthetic now. But black frames can be really nice, though. Sure they can. Yeah. For me, for me, um, the black frames would not would kind of be one of those things that don't go out of style. I think to a large extent, you're probably right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus a brass that can come in and out of style. Right. I love those, you know, those glass doors that you, like... It's like the thick glass and the black frame and then the kind of door where it's almost like a hook and you have to like hook it out, but it's like all glass with a black frame. I'm trying to think of where where in our life we you hook it out. Have that door. I don't understand that part of it. <laughs> well, it's like a, almost like a greenhouse door. Oh, oh, so you kind of prop it with a with a What no, it, you can walk through it. Who has doors like that? I'm trying to remember. The glass doors, maybe it was my university. Okay. Like glass, all glass door. Mm-hmm. But it's like frames in the door. Yeah. It's interesting. I think my favorite are the ones, those California, I don't know if they're California, but they they fold in on each other like an accordion. They're and pretty and great. I mean, imagine being able to just do that and then you don't have a wall and it's just open mm-hmm. to the world. That's awesome. But I think you kind of have to have that open onto something beautiful. Like, I don't think it makes sense. I think you get inspired to make it beautiful if you have that. But if if your backyard faces a beach, let's say, Mm -hmm. which is where I see them on those shows that you watch, that's where I've seen them, right? Mm -hmm. And not just in California. There was a... a, We have a nice backyard. It would be nice back there. I guess, yeah. Yeah. The the garden. The garden. But I think you need a really long window to do that. I don't think. I mean, I don't think we'd be able to do it. I think we have to go the French door route because it, you'd have to knock out the whole wall. We don't have enough wall. We don't have enough wall. We don't have enough house for that. It's yeah. a townhouse, so yeah, not this house. 
but I think that's what French doors are for then, right? Mm-hmm. When you can't <laughs> – I don't think it's like, well, you can't do the accordion, open up the whole wall. You can do a French door. No, a French door is a very different mm-hmm. aesthetic. So that's what I'd like to do. I'm surprised you didn't put them in, just they were too expensive? I wasn't thinking at that point when I replaced those doors um, of, of French doors. Plus, remember, the backyard wasn't what it is today. True, but so, still. Well, to me, that would always be over sliders because you put in really good sliders. Yeah. French doors are not much more than that. But your mom insisted that we wouldn't be able to have French doors that the way they open or something. At that time, we just had these little concrete steps out, so I think it might yeah. have been tricky. Probably. But, you know, the case for the French doors. <laughs> uh, you've made a great case for the French have doors. I? I think so. I, I think feel so. like I'm not the most coherent person today, but. Well, you've had a long day. I've had a long month. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Long week, certainly. And uh, I also like. A glass door that tells me when it's shut. What you know how you can mean? get glass doors? Like it, you see them in hotels. When you flip the knob, it's either green or red, telling you whether you've locked it or not. Okay. I, th- I guess that's what I meant by it, whether it's locked or not. Um, yeah, for example, ours, it's up or down. So you can't really tell unless you know up, up is open and down is locked. The sliders you're talking yeah. about? Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's good to know when it's locked. Mm-hmm. Sure. sure. What about front doors? Front doors? Mm-hmm. Ours is yellow. No, but I'm talking about the glass part of the front door. Well, I think ideally, you know what I love? A Dutch door. A half door? Like one that yeah. can open from the bottom or the top? Can we do that? Mm, I don't know. A weird half door? But what's the purpose of it? Handing food, looking at the chickens. I don't know. I guess it doesn't make sense in the city. <laughs> it just feels so rural. I just want everything to seem like a French countryside today. I guess. You know, go tend to the goose. Get the goose eggs. Do you know anyone who ever had a goose on their property? Probably. They're very territorial. Like they're better yeah. than guard dogs to have a goose. Maybe we should get a goose. Imagine, Imagine we got a goose in the city. <laughs> Lay eggs? Don't tempt me. I know. If we could, if you could have. We end up, all our friends get goose eggs for their, like, for their birthdays. Like, okay, guys, we get it. You have eggs. No, you just have a ton of goose eggs. You'd have to, you'd have to sort of either consume or pass on to your friends. But I, th- I think a We goose... eat a lot of eggs. I feel like we would do okay. Maybe not with a goose eggs, but. Goose eggs are bigger. I know. And I think they, they have more cholesterol, too. Probably. But I think a goose requires more space than what we have to offer a goose. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a goose in the house is probably not the right choice. I don't think it's the right choice at all. <laughs> I think we're better off with French doors, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> if the cost is the same, I'll take the French doors. I think the, Fr- I think the French door. <laughs> well, I think ridiculous goose, conversation. geese in the short run would cost you less, but in the long run. But they'd be great, the great protection, a goose. I don't... I'm just saying, a goose. I've never seen, like, a sign in a window or a little bumper sticker or whatever kind of thing that's like, beware of goose. I Maybe would, we just need to get that. I would so put that in our window, beware of goose. All right, let's get a beware of goose sign. You often say, I, I'm very difficult to shop for. You want a beware of goose sign. I want a beware of goose sign in our front door window. Okay. So that anybody who comes to the door. Our front door window. Where, where you would have a beware of the dog. Okay. Isn't I was that, thinking the kitchen window, but. Oh, yeah. We could put it in the kitchen window. But that on face. the door, you want beware of goose. It could be in the kitchen window. Just as long as people walking by see a sign that says beware, beware of goose. Beware of goose. And then in brackets, not the character from Top Gun. Well, you should beware of goose, too, from Top Gun. You should beware of goose. <laughs> Because he'll... <laughs> he'll always he'll, let you down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, what a what a strange, weird, and wonderful episode. It was episode. a weird conversation. I, I want to thank everyone who does reach out and send us messages. I think we're going we're gonna to wind down the season very soon, Amanda, because we're getting a little bit... Uh, long in the goose. Long in the goose for sure. But even just to, to sort of like regroup and uh, get our 
holiday episodes ready for December. So that's coming up too. But if you have any ideas for uh, episodes you would like to hear or things you want to want to hear us discuss on our holiday episodes, please let us know because we, of course, value your feedback and we'd love to offer whatever we can that uh, might suit your needs. Right, Amanda? Right. Until then, Amanda, we're going to listen to that book. Did you did you um, get it from the library on your app so that we can Strange listen? Beautiful Creatures? What's it called? It's called uh, – one second. Let me just get that up again. It's called Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt, which sounds like a ma- made-up name, Shelby Van Pelt. Have you read anything by Shelby Van Pelt? All right. I'm, no, I'm placing a hold. Re- okay. Remarkably Bright Creatures. So hopefully it's not a long book. We can listen to it because we're we're leaving for Ottawa in the morning. Eleven so. hours. Ooh. Okay. We've got some David Sedaris to uh, get through. To get through, yeah. And we're listening to Harvey Fire- Firestein's uh, biography, which is a long one too. Mm-hmm. So we've got a couple of books, but we will get to it. Carrie, thank you for that suggestion. And once again, if you have a book suggestion or anything, you let us know. Until then, we hope you enjoy this episode. Mirror windows and I should say goose instead of glass doors i i have a new um a new sort of logo that i'm going to be putting on social media when we have a new episode amanda Mm -hmm. so i'll see if i can get the word goose in there somewhere until then we hope you were able to listen and sleep